All right, welcome to Inside the Ropes here on Twitch from Old San Juan, Puerto Rico. We're not inside the ropes yet, but we will be to recap everything that transpired this evening here in Old San Juan as Amanda Serrano stops Daniela Bermudez at 133 of the ninth round and really a dominant performance by Amanda Serrano this evening as she takes care of business and picks up her 30th career stoppage and picks up her 40th career victory. Look at that, that's us getting inside the Very ring. nimble, Bob, hopping we're through in, those ropes. We're inside the ropes. Glad you can join us on Twitch. We're gonna take your questions. Brian's got his phone, he's ready to go, and uh, we'll make sense of what we saw here this evening. Let's get as interactive as we can here. We love to hear from the viewers, but win number 40 in the great career of Amanda Serrano. Bob, we said this could be a super fighter, was one at least on paper coming in with Daniela Bermudez, the unified champion at 122 pounds. She was game as all heck, but when it came down, you're just facing in the end a more skilled fighter who had every answer, Bob, to any question Bermudez offered. She certainly did, and Bermudez, you know, tried to press the action and walk down Serrano, but the problem was that there was really nothing behind it. Every time she tried to walk her down, she got tagged, and Serrano clearly had a plan. She obviously did her studying, and she understood what Bermudez was gonna try to do, and she was ready to pick it apart. And they fought a tough fight on the inside, a great pace. Bermudez had some big moments, let's say, at the end of rounds, but could not sustain that over the course of the two minutes. Uh, how about the third member of our Inside the Ropes team making her debut, the WBA 108-pound champion of the world, Sinisa Estrada. And Sinisa, when we're talking about everything we were impressed about with Amanda Serrano, uh, coming back to her home island, stealing and owning the show here, what stood out to you the most? Oh, yeah, it was such a great night for her. Great night, uh, exciting fight to watch. And what stood out the most was just how she displayed everything that she can do. She has different things in her arsenal. She can box, she can move good footwork, defense, great body shots as we all seen. Um, so yeah, just her having, her, her just having a lot of things in her arsenal and, and being able to fight with a plan B and a plan C and you know, even a plan D. And you don't see that a lot with, with most fighters. You know, it's either a plan A and they don't know what to do after that, and that's the problem that Bermuda's had tonight. Brian, um, she mentioned that she wants to unify all the belts, right? She wants to have all of them. She's the big draw at this weight class. You got to come to her. I mean, when you think about the fact that, you know, fighting out of Brooklyn, uh, she's got promoter Lou DiBella behind her, um, generating a lot of positive publicity. She's got Puerto Rico as her homeland where she was born. She's got a following here. I would think that really um, people are going to have to come to her. They will. She, she's the one that has the biggest name. Well, not only does she have the nine titles and seven weight divisions at featherweight, which is her best weight class, she's got two of the four championships. She wants to be the undisputed champion to get her closer to the potential of that Katie Taylor shootout. Now, Katie Taylor, the great Irish fighter with the Olympic background, has all four belts at 135 pounds. We know Amanda can jump up and wait and move around, but you love what, what Amanda represents. I mean, it wasn't long ago, Sunisa, in 2018, Amanda took two mixed martial arts fights because she didn't believe women's boxers were getting the platform they deserve. Well, she got the platform tonight. She, and did. she deserved it and delivered. Yeah, that's why I was so happy for her and so happy for women's boxing because she has been through so much. Her career has been so long and she just never got these opportunities that she deserves. So to see her get the opportunities that she deserves on this platform tonight, main event, and do it in such a great fashion is just so inspiring and so great to see. Now, Bob, I love asking you questions about the scoring here and the judges, because people <laughs> don't know Bronx Bob can bring it here. So we're <laughs> obviously encouraging our Twitch users to let their voice be heard. Samson says, were you guys surprised that Serrano was pitching a clean sweep on the scorecards? Samson thought that Bermudez might have picked up one or those later rounds. I had it. You know, this is one of the rare nights where every score that we had, even in our Twitch fights earlier, including the last one we did with Solano, uh, my scorecard was kind of right on point with the judges. I had uh, Serrano pitching a shutout. I, I had it eight rounds to nothing uh, in this fight, and I thought that she was able to win each round. And even when Bermudez had a couple of moments in the round, Serrano always doubled down on it was better. 
I, I can't argue with that. Maybe I, I gave agree. Bermudez one or two rounds on my scorecard. But so much talk here, uh, Sinisa, about the potential of a down-the-road Katie Taylor fight. And Boxing Fanatico on our Twitch stream loves it. He wants to know, do we think we will see it next? Amanda said herself she wants to be the undisputed champ first. But what I want to ask you, based on what he said, is how competitive is that fight to you? Oh, that is a super competitive fight. I thought I was hyped for this fight. I will be hyped for Serrano versus Taylor. Um, huge fight, exciting fight, nonstop action. And, you know, I don't think we'll see it next, but we're definitely going to see it. We were, almost saw it, I think, three separate times in 2020. The quarantine and everything that came with that did delay it. But let's go over right now with Curran Batia. He's with the champ, Amanda Serrano, and her trader, Jordan Maldonado. Amanda. Congratulations again, Thank you. Jordan. So we have to ask what <laughs> yes. happened there uh, between rounds. You were escorted to the side, uh, taken away from the corner. So what happened there? Okay. Um. See, uh, we fought an Argentinian girl in New York, uh, Jamila Reynoso. You know, I understand that in the heat of battle, fighters get frustrated. You know what I'm saying? They're getting hit. They're not able to tee off. So, you know, I don't know if it's an Argentinian thing. I don't. I don't know that. I mean, we fought three of them. We beat all three. But, you know, um, Maria Madena, we stopped in Argentina. But uh, what happened was the first time after the bell rang, she threw two or three punches. And that's OK. I understand. In the heat of battle, you can say that. But then the next round, I told Amanda, listen, you know, let's box the girl. Let's break her down. You know what I'm saying? Don't get sloppy. Then she did it again. So I do what you're supposed to do. I tell the referee, which is a nice guy. I know this guy for a long time. So I'm like, hey, buddy, you know, she's frustrated. So she's hitting us after the bell. You guys could put a replay and see that a couple of times, once the bell rang, she threw another one or two punches. You know what I'm saying? Those are the punches that will hurt a fighter. You know what I'm saying? Because the minute we hear the bell, we stop throwing punches. Now, if you're going to throw another two or three cheap shots, you know what I'm saying, I'm not going to go with that. So, I, you know, I told him, I said, my man, do your job. Your job is here to, to protect the fighters. You know what I'm saying? She, at one time, he came over, and he warned us about something. So you can warn us about something, but you can't take control. You know, and I know these individuals. He was my referee in the Dominican Republic yeah. in December. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's just me trying to let him know, do your effing job. And I guess I got out of character, whatever, and he removed me. You you, you, you got out of character, they removed you to the side, but at the end of the day, Amanda was able to get the body shot, get the ninth round win, and actually your sister Cindy was watching at home as we showed on the broadcast, and I actually have a message from Cindy. She's, she said, she closed the show like a champ, on to the next, love you. So that's that's the message to Cindy. So what do you want to say to Cindy right now? Oh my God, Cindy, she knows me so well, and she knows um, how hard I work and how hard we work together as a team, and I'm just so thankful and grateful for her. and. Um, I just love my team to death, and I'm going to continue to go to the end of the world with them. And this was your homecoming fight. Yes. Now, this was supposed to be closed off to the public, right? But we're in a square, <laughs> oh we're in an God. open square. There was fans that came by. Did you feel the energy of the crowd I tonight? Def I definitely did. Said, it yeah. felt so wonderful. And um, I, that, I haven't, well, we haven't had that in a little while, so it just felt good, and it, it brought um, more more in intensity into, into the fight. To the fight. Daniela brought a tough fight. She was moving forward. At one point, she switched to southpaw, yeah. and you took advantage of that. Exactly. Did she have any anything different than you expected? No, we knew it. And in the um, in training camp, we knew that she switched to southpaw. And my and my both my trainers told me when she's not a southpaw. So when she goes yeah. southpaw, take advantage of it you and know, go for, come forward. You, so. you know, it's a funny thing because. You could only pull that on somebody that doesn't know how to fight. You know what I'm saying? You could only put pressure in a style that is not yours against someone who you can beat. We know this. If you're not a southpaw, you're, you're, you're going to get in trouble and you're going to resort to switching. There's no way in the world that girl's a southpaw. You're not going to pull that off on I, us. I heard you yelling. My ring I heard you yelling. She's high. not a southpaw. I heard you yelling that. So in the ninth round, Amanda got the body shot knockout. knockout. What did you think of the body shot and what did you think of the end of the fight? I mean, you, you know what? I, I, like I told Amanda, I said, listen. You know, and I told her between rounds, I guess you guys can go back. And I always tell Amanda, when you got TV, you have to take advantage of that. You know what I'm saying? One, two, three round stoppages don't really tell anything. So if you look, I don't know if it was a second or third round, I told Amanda, listen, look good, enjoy the fight, get it, get rounds in. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what? This is what people appreciate. People thought that Amanda has just, you know, like a punching power that's only the first, second, third round. We could do this in the 10th round. We could, if there was 12 rounds, 
rounds, we'll stop you in the 12 rounds. You know what I'm saying? Because what we do is systematically break you down. And so just to close it out, Amanda, it was made, a lot was made of your dedication to fighting. No cell phone, no boyfriend. I know your goal is to be undisputed champion. So let me ask it this way. Are you still going to have no cell phone and continue that journey? Hey, it's worked so far, and I, I'm not going to have one. I'm not happy. I mean, I'm not planning to have one anytime soon. <laughs> and, and again, listen, one last thing that I want to say. Listen, it's nothing personal against Jelena Maltenovic. It's nothing personal about uh, against Sarah Mafu. They just so happen to have a piece of the puzzle in our division. That's our goal, so that's what we're going after. Yes. Amanda, congratulations. Looking forward to seeing you back in there again. Jordan, thanks so much. Thank back you to so you much. guys. Bob, it may be time for you to retire that flip phone and follow in Amanda's <laughs> yeah. lead right there. Uh, I did want to stay right here. And, and Sinise, I want to ask you the, about this in a second. But, Bob, Midnight Corona made a great point in our Twitch stream <laughs> and said, uh, three-minute rounds allow for more action and more opportunities for KOs. And Amanda's such a great puncher that she's, she finished uh, Bermuda's on this night with that beautiful body shot. But it's 2021. Could you think of any reason why women's boxing is still using two-minute rounds? No, I can't. And, you know, um, having started calling women's boxing a long time ago in in the late 90s and the depth of each weight class has gotten better the skill level with the olympics uh including women's boxing in it you're getting you know better athletes involved in the sport and to me i think we're we're at that point in time and i'd like to get your thoughts on it of getting the having the rounds at three minutes i totally disagree with it um i think that women should go three minute rounds I feel like there's so many of us who, all the top women in the sport right now want three minute rounds. And of course you still have your fighters who will not accept three minute rounds. They won't fight you. If you're going three minute rounds, they want to stick to two. But you know, times are changing. It's 2021, women's boxing is on the rise. We need those three minute rounds. It's definitely, like you said, it, it just, two minutes just flies by. There's not enough time to use your jab and to do certain things that you want to do. Not enough time to set up certain punches. So. It's got to change. Hey, all right, so um, Mark Ortega, our great research guy. He, crack research man. He just he comes <laughs> up with all these great stats. So I gave the one at the end of the broadcast that Bermudez is now the 12th fighter that Serrano has handed their first career knockout loss to. How about this nugget? Serrano is now second all-time in career knockouts Woo. by a female boxer with 30. She's tied with Zulina Munoz. And first is Christy Martin with 32. So I got to feel that Serrano is going to eventually be the all-time record holder. In I that. mean, Serrano's accomplishments speak for themselves. But it, Sinise, it's not just Serrano. I mean, let's give her her flowers here. I mean, this was an incredible performance, nine titles and seven weight classes. But Hernan Q has an interesting question. And we ran that top 10 pound for pound poll earlier. You got Clarissa Shields. You got Katie Taylor, so many other great fighters. Is this the best era of women's boxing history in your eyes, which includes you, by the way? Definitely the best era of women's boxing. Don't even have to stop and think about it. Um, you know, the, the, it just seems like the skills of women are just becoming better and better, and this this is the this is the decade, yeah. Well, and I and I, I really believe uh, that it's a function of the fact that boxing was included in the Olympic Games there for you go. women, and mm -hmm. that that gave women a path to hone their skills and go through the amateur game and learn the sport just like the men do and develop skills that then when they went to the pros, because when I first started doing women's boxing in the late 90s, women, why would you be in amateur boxing as a woman if there was no path to an Olympics? Right. What's the point? It's a waste of time. And you would get people turning pro at the age of 33 or 34 with no amateur experience coming from other sports. The field, the skill level, she's walking right by our TV compound to use the, uh, the ladies room uh the, the 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 skill level and it's all to me a function of the olympics including women's boxing and that has changed I women's agree. professional boxing forever yes. for the good the skill level in the professionals because of amateur boxing in the olympics is definitely the reason why women in the professionals are now so much more skilled like i had over 100 amateur fights it wasn't easy because when i was coming up in the amateurs there wasn't many women boxing women's boxing was dead so it was kind of unpredictable for me i mean i knew i wanted to eventually turn professional but the reason why the transition into the pros was so easy for me was because i had all of that amateur experience and amateur boxing is is 
is huge now for women. And then you look at 2020, the International Boxing Hall of Fame entered its first class of women coming in, obviously somewhere where we expect Amanda Serrano to be. Uh, the questions are coming in fast and furious, and you never know who's going to appear in this Twitch stream. Uh, D G-O-N says Sinisa Estrada is like the Jennifer Lopez of boxing. Hey, watch your mouth here, D-G-O-N. A lot of people asking you out to carne asada after the fight. We're trying to regulate those comments. But how about Sean Porter showing up in this chat? We love you, two-division champion Sean Porter. We're praying for you. We love you. We hope you're recovering. He says, great job tonight as always, fellas. And Sinisa, very proud of you tonight, champ. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. That means a lot. Well, we did run. Hey, let, let me ask you that. I want to shift it, gears for a second. Bob, you can. I, I'm just hoping Curran is tracking down uh, King Arthur, the DJ, somewhere. Can we get the exclusive interview? Curran well, interviews everybody at every show. Um, you know, the other thing, just to switch off Amanda Serrano for a second, I think the other star of the night, because we had a couple of young boxers from Puerto Rico that were on the card, and I think when you take a look at what Carlos Caraballo did against Leonardo Baez. Woo really impressive like Amanda Serrano was disciplined now this is an up-and-coming prospect but you know in, in the fights that we've done here in Puerto Rico with some of the younger prospects would you not say that Caraballo has been one of the best looking of the young prospects to this point well he's very handsome Bob if that's where you were going but no <laughs> the overall game let's be honest here 14 and 0 with 14 KOs let's run the highlights right here from what we saw against obviously the Baez brothers who come to fight but Caraballo had the technique the speed Sinisa he looks like a finished product only 14 fights into his career he does I was freaking out and I was just waiting for that knockout to where it would totally end the fight and um it was exciting from the beginning and 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 i didn't think it was gonna you know i thought it was gonna be a war to the end but he killed it tonight yeah and then uh you know abimel ortiz another prospect who was eight and out coming into this eduardo baez came in now eduardo baez clearly more skilled better game plan in the ring than leonardo baez was but i just love the precision of caraballo and you know, his punch combinations. And when Leonardo Baez was putting pressure on him, not once did he ever look flustered. No, he's so poised and the sharpness. And, you know, he says, don't call me a puncher, even though I've knocked out everybody I face, yet he can box the footwork. Bob, you made a great point off camera, as you often do, by the way. You know? <laughs> Some of my uh, best you, work you is know, off You know, you made a comparison. Remember the Klitschko brothers when one brother would lose, the other one would track down Chris Bird or track down Corey Sanders and avenge it? You said, hey, why don't we get Carlos Caraballo in there? And, I, you know, we employ you on the microphone at Ring City, not in matchmaking, although we'll see if we can change that. How about Caraballo against the other Baez brother, Eduardo Baez, who had a sensational performance this evening? Yeah, I don't, I, and I don't know. I think it would be a great Ring City USA fight because Ooh. there is no B side. I think that Eduardo Baez, what he showed tonight was head movement, being able to circle around Ortiz, and um, a good boxing IQ that I think would make it a much more difficult fight for Caraballo. I'm not saying that Caraballo wouldn't continue to win, but I think that would be a really good test for him than what he had in I would love to see that. And Sinisa, quickly here, Eduardo Baez uh, defeated Abimael Ortiz. I love the pressure on the inside from Baez and the poise. Oh, yeah, I love the pressure, love the poise. Such accurate shots. Great stuff. You uh, know, I, I got a question for you. Well, but, but, <laughs> just take over the show here, please. Well, you know, when we started the night on Twitch, we had a little fun with, you know, Kern's, you know, Jimmy Johnson kind of hair that doesn't move even I don't at know. 17 mile I mean, per hour wind. He doesn't even have any grays in it. This guy, it's flawless, Bob. Well, so now my Where question is to you is, but, well, he's waiting to interview somebody. <laughs> he interviews everybody on the card, and it gets repurposed somewhere. The but hair the, is still in place. The big question for you is, where'd you get that? snazzy shirt hey i got it at the uh at the mall here in puerto rico okay i said look i need something that will that will not only make a splash on camera but it's got to anger the directors it's got to be an eyesore when you look at the screen did you so get a free certainly... sandwich or a, a bowl of soup with that thing? <laughs> oh, hey bobby's got jokes uh pound for pound glory came in and definitely praised our matchmakers they want to know who it is we keep those names locked tight right that's exactly uh, what i was thinking i was like this is i love how there's there's no there's no A-side and no B-side. No side. Well, that's, the, that's the genesis of why Ring City USA was born. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Showtime Sean Porter did come back and say, uh, thanks for the well wishes, but I think I'm about to lose my job. <laughs> Estrada <laughs> did so good. Uh, there may be some agents <laughs> dueling on the phone here. You know, and the other thing is, how about Yvonne Calderon? He told me 
That was the first time. Now, he's done some commentating before, but all on Spanish TV. Ooh. He's never done commentary in English. And how about that little nugget he dropped? Now, the great Ivan Calderon is 46 years old, although he doesn't look it. No. He said he's planning a December comeback. If the local commission and the quarantine laws have changed by then, uh, we could see him back in a fun exposition, ex exhibition. Excuse me. Uh, Sanisa, <laughs> a legend like that, a former 108-pound champion of the world, one of the best pure boxers of the modern era, I'd pop for that. I'd be excited. I, I, yeah, I was so excited when he was telling me. I can't wait. Like, I want to be a sparring partner for his training camp. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby was inspired by Mike Tyson at 54, coming back and fighting Roy Jones Jr. Hey, what? Bob, I'm saying there's still time, okay? I mean, look, yeah. at, you, look at you in those capris. There's still time, buddy. <laughs> wow, he gave me a shot. Good for you. Uh, you got any more Twitch questions? Uh, none that are appropriate here, so why don't we put a wrap on the night? A lot of people, big fan of Sinisa, rightfully so. Uh, the Twitch poll, though, okay? We did ask people. We ran a poll earlier tonight. Who do you want to see Amanda Serrano fight next? 73% said Katie Taylor. Uh, that's fantastic. 14% did say, though, Jelena Mergenovich, who tweeted tonight that she expects to be back on Ring City maybe April 22nd. So uh, we know there's been some trash talk between the two. You know Jelena's game. She's been a world-class fighter for so long. Right. How do you, would you see that fight going down? Oh, that fight would be so exciting to see. And, and she's been in the game for a long time, just like. Uh, oh, boy. Just Here like we go. Time. There we go. Stop the presses. Stop. Sorry, I'm so distracted right now. I can't even finish that answering that question. DJ <laughs> King Arthur in the house. In the house. With Curran. Curran, I will stop this show right now to hear from the great royalty, the, the king himself, Listen, Arthur. Let's go. You know go. what? You cannot get this kind of You guys asked for, for King Arthur, right? <laughs> I have uh, delivered King Arthur, King, DJ King Arthur. DJ we have to DJ say, DJ King okay. Arthur. So you played here at this boxing event. Have you played a boxing event before? This is my first one. And you're from Puerto Rico. Yes. What did you think of the crowds here? Is this like the crowds that show up for your shows? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, every Puerto Rican is very energetic. Yeah. So you'll see like every uh, boxing match or basketball or every type of event. They're all like euphoric all the time. So. And. Everyone in Puerto Rico we know loves boxing. Do you have a favorite Puerto Rican fighter? Yeah, actually, I, I know Cotto, I know Tito. I know a lot, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, famous boxers because my, my job, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're so super great. So we see you in your great outfit here. <laughs> yeah. And the show's over, but you still have it on. So is this something you wear at all times, sleep, shower? Yeah, short story, I'm a mechanical engineer, also a DJ and a music producer. I made the whole suit myself. And... Uh, yeah, this is kind of like, it, it has become like an extension of me, for sure. I, I mean, it's super comfortable for me, but yeah. And I, guys, I think Daft Punk has been really quiet uh, since that statement was made here, so wow. I'll say that. <laughs> King hey, Arthur, I want to I thank you so oh much for, for coming out and uh, spitting some uh, tunes here. Yeah, for sure, Current thank you. And, and, also, and it's a perfect honestly, pandemic. the event was super pro. I mean, uh, for a technical level, I was seeing like all the cameras, all the viewpoints and everything was like on point. Absolutely. Well, King Arthur, thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Nobody, nobody gets the exclusives like Curran Batia on Inside the Ropes. Bob, how sweaty is that great DJ underneath that? Please tell me, Bob. I'm, I'm sure a good shower will come in handy. But you know what? It's a perfect pandemic uh, wardrobe because it comes with a ready-made mask. Uh, it's great for birthday parties. He's a superhero in the evenings. This guy's a renaissance man. I love it. Hey, what about uh, April the 8th? Now, I don't when want you to, uh, to to screw the pooch here and tell people where this might I'm, be. I'm, they they don't gonna, tell me anything here, it's right? It's going to be on the east coast of the United States. Now, tonight we had a view of water. Uh, there's a chance that we would have a pretty good view of water where we're going to be on the east coast of the United States on April the 8th at 9 p.m. Eastern. Are you fired up for it? Charles Conwell, 14-0, 11 knockouts, 2016 U.S. Olympian. All right, what about the Coleman? Getting ready for Thursday uh, night in BCSN. Uh, Ring City, USA. <laughs> Max Oliver oh. Rocco Papa. Why he just he no, almost he, punched you in the he, face. He almost got me with little the right wide, Bob, little wide, but see the great Amanda Serrano in our main event. I don't know why That's he adorable. decided to bring the gloves out, but he did. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, this is a stud. A, well, this is where he finishes me off. Watch this. So cute. Go to the body, son. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Amanda Serrano would be proud. <laughs>
Uh, I looked like Daniela Bermudez at the end. Not nearly as tough, okay? Uh, when are we going to get a two-drink minimum going on this post show, okay? It's about All right, guys. Time. I haven't had any sleep since the night before my world title fight, so I got to head back home now, yeah, unfortunately. Can you, Bob, can you put a bow? Oh, we got current again. Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Bob, can you put a bow on the evening, please? Okay. Yeah, Amanda Serrano did what she had to do. She took care of business. She was dominant. She was the headliner. She's a true star in the sport of boxing, as you said, not just women's boxing, in the sport of boxing. And we hope you enjoyed us tonight on Twitch. We're going to be back on April the 8th from somewhere on the east coast of the United States with a view of water. Make sure you check us out. Make sure you check us out on social media. And I think that's a wrap for this edition of Inside the Ropes. For the great champion, Yvonne Calderon, and for the 108-pound champion of the world, Sinisa Estrada, 20-0, super bad. Thank you. Thank it was you a guys pleasure. so much. Pleasure. This was Inside the Ropes on Twitch, Rink City USA. Anyone, anytime, anywhere. <laughs>